Hello everyone and welcome to another guide. Today we're going to go over tanking basics. Now as you're gearing up for more Mythic Plus for plus 10, plus 15 keys, the new raids coming out, we all basically need to know what we're doing when we're tanking. So let's go over some of those basics. Now if you're a warrior and you need help with what gear to get and what stats to prioritize, take a look here I made another video all about that. But let's get into some general tips for every tank. These are going to be basic. I will come out with an advanced guide later on, but let's go over some of these basics. Now the first basic when running any dungeon is holding AoE threat. A big part of this is to use the Omen add-on. Omen is going to show you exactly how much threat you have relative to everyone else, but the big thing to remember about AoE threat is that you need to rotate out of your single target rotation that you use in raids and you need to start using a different rotation, a rotation that focuses heavily on AoE damage. Now if you're a warrior this includes Thunderclap and Revenge, if you're a Death Knight this includes Death and Decay. Everybody has a cleave and an AoE ability, you need to rotate both of those abilities at all times. One thing to remember is your DPS will be focusing damage on one mob and if anyone in your party happens to pull away from you, it's better to use single target moves at that point because they generate higher threat. Something else to take note of is that taunt is very useful. I know some tanks actually take taunt off of their bars and they think that just using all of their moves is going to help, but in a make or break situation where a mob is running away from you, sometimes you need that taunt. It could be the case that someone in your party also happens to pull another mob in the distance and taunt is going to help you get that mob to you as fast as possible. So to take threat back from a DPS that took it away from you, what you need to do is start single targeting that mob. If there's one particular mob that you need to burn down at all times and everyone is aware of that, you should single target that mob while rotating your cleave and your AoE every now and then just to keep minimal threat on every other target. Something else to know in dungeons and in tanking is you need to know what your active mitigation ability is. Now I'm going to go ahead and put them here on the screen for every class you need to try to have as close to 100% uptime with these abilities as possible. Just because you're the tank and you're geared like a tank doesn't mean you need to do everything in your power to minimize damage. The more you minimize damage, the less of a threat dying is to you, the less hard your healer has to work. It all works out a lot better. Now something I see a lot of tanks do is they don't move out of fire. Now what I mean by fire is I mean all of these abilities that cast something on the ground. A lot of times I'll see the tank just stay there. They think that because they're a tank they can go ahead and take all this damage and they'll be fine. Which is a completely wrong way to think about it. If you look at stuff like my Charizard guide, higher level content is not forgiving for people who don't understand mechanics. It's always good to get into the habit of dodging everything, whether you're tanking a heroic, a mythic, a mythic plus 5, a mythic plus 15, whatever it is you're tanking, you have to get into the habit of avoiding all of the damage on the ground. Avoid everything as much as possible, even if it means you're not going to be generating rage or DPSing or runic power for that short amount of time, it's a lot better to just avoid all that damage. Now the last thing we'll go over in today's basic, basic guide for tanking is how to position mobs. The general rule of thumb is that you should always face any mob you tank away from the group. However, when moving mobs, I've noticed that a lot of first time tanks have a lot of problem positioning mobs and they just jump around and the mobs move sporadically. Something to note is the circle underneath the mob that you're gonna be tanking. Now if it's a big circle, like a raid boss, then that means that that mob will not move that much. However, if it's a small circle, that mob is going to move around a lot more. It's going to be a lot more sensitive to movement. One thing you can do is if you see the circle on the ground, the way to rotate that mob properly is not to run through it. It's actually to run around the circumference of the circle where that mob is. So again, to move mobs into position, you have to run up to them, start generating a little bit of threat, and then start positioning the mob. You want to face them away from the group. And if you're having issues with the mob, a simple double tap of your S key will work. This will make you walk backwards a little bit. It'll make the mobs reposition in front of you again. I know a lot of times they have a tendency to spread out in front of you. But remember, the more you move your mob, the harder it is for your DPS to maintain damage on it. All right, that does it for Tanking Basics 101. I have seen a lot more new tanks come around, a lot of people rolling on their off spec and tanking for the first time. I was in a group earlier 
that had someone tank Xavius for the first time. That was really fun. So again, if you need any more help, I'm going to go ahead and link all of the tanking guides I've made below. Some of these are warrior specific, but a lot of these are actually for everyone, just like this guide. I will be releasing a much more advanced guide for a lot of people out there. And as always, good luck tanking out there.